What's up guys and gals, welcome back to the Nerdcast for the next episode of Dead State, where we are going to go back out and do some more stuff. How's that sound? We are going to sprint on out. In the previous episode, we gone to like a memorial park or something like that, and we needed to come back and drop off our stuff, but it's not actually that far away, so I think we can hit it and still get everything we want out of it, and maybe we'll hit Lano Residential on the way back as well. I have been thinking about going to some of the... I guess military run shelters, but I'm thinking that might be a bad idea at this point. I don't know. If they're military run, I think it would logically follow that there would probably be a lot of military guys there, right? And I don't think as we're equipped pretty well for civilians right now, but as combatants, we are not equipped that well. And that makes me a little bit nervous about going over there and like causing trouble and, you know, calling names and flipping birds and all that fun stuff. So anyways, we're going to try and stay away from it for right now, but there were a couple things we needed to clear out here. I wonder if the zombie's still bugged. Let's figure it out. I think he still is. It's actually saying he's still over here. When I click on him to attack, hold on, I bet weird stuff's about to happen right now. We need to watch this and just see what happens. So what happens... Yeah, there's invisible zombies right now. We have, like, issues, and I have no idea. We're going to watch this for shenanigans and just see what happens. So, see, I hit him over here, but he's over there. Like, something weird just happened. Like, the game lost track of its zombie, and now we kind of have to deal with the aftermath of that effect. All right. I can't stay away from those pyrolines, by the way. I keep eating them. See, what is going on? That is, like, the longest zombie move turn ever. And then he's still got a big-ass bite off. Oh, my God. That's ridiculous. That is shenanigans right there. Oh, man. Alright, well, at least we sorted out the bug. That's all that I really cared about. He is going to be resistant to any damage, which makes us kind of a pain to get rid of him. But hopefully, yeah, he's resisting like a huge amount of our damage right now. If I can get him to right there and maybe land a good hit, we'll take him out. There it is. And so now, our problem has been solved. What we do with all these busted bullet vests, I'm not sure. They weigh... It looks like it weighs three pounds so it should give us one part if we traded it on the recycler but I don't know if that's the best way to use those like maybe later on when we build something we get to use a busted bullet vest I don't know it's a little odd and I'm not sure how it's gonna come full circle later on but we'll figure it out let's see this the photo found on a corpse appears to be of siblings something is written on the back Michael's family reunion 2013 Ryan and Piper I wonder if that's Ryan from our shelter it seems like a little odd and coincidental if it is. But then again, why would they go to all the trouble to label it inside the context of the... Oh, there's a zombie right there. No, stop biting me, Hillary Clinton. No, please leave me alone, you blood-sucking bastard. Okay, so now she's... Oh, no, we missed. Hillary Clinton is just too sly for us. We can't catch her with a baton upside the head, unfortunately. For right now, go away. The only thing worse than a zombie is a zombie politician. There we go. Awesome. So we'll get that done right there. My distaste for politicians, I think, is something universal. And it seems like one of those really stereotypical things to complain about. But really, like, why would anybody ever go into politics? It seems like you would start... I, I'm willing to bet that most of these people, like, naively think they can actually, like, change something. And then once they get there, they're like, oh, it's that deeply entrenched. There's just, like, nothing you can do about any of these pre-existing systems, are there? You're like, nope. Awesome. Well then, I guess I'll just settle on in and get to focusing on getting re-elected as many times as possible and collecting as many donations as possible for my county. Awesome, and then you end up with a brand new politician who works just like all the rest of them. Hooray. Joy, joy, joy. Nothing like seeing the light, hope, and naivete be smashed out of a well-meaning person's eyes. Why are you not with us right now, Paul? No, that's Elaine. Never mind. I can't tell anymore. We all are wearing the exact same outfit except for Tweedle Time. So I never know who I'm looking at anymore. I suppose I could probably look at the weapon and figure it out, but meh, whatever. Yep, the Pleasant Street Library, a truck stop, the old neighborhood, there's Buchanan Lake. I think Lano might be one of our best calls right now. Or we could try the cabin in the woods, I guess. We're not that far out. It only takes us a couple hours to get around. There we go. So now that we've gotten our Beach Boys on, I'm like, get around, 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 Alright, we're gonna go over here. 
All right. I mentioned that I watched that Frankie Valley movie, right? Yeah. It's been just like a full just 24 hours of falsetto singing over at my house recently. It's been bad. If you are not into falsetto, this is not the place for you right now. This is a place where you will quickly become angry with your present circumstance. What am I even looting right now? They said this was a cabin in the woods, but there's like a grocery store next to it. It'd be pretty awesome to have your own personal grocery store. Let's loot some TP out of the toilet over here. And this pallet. Probably going to have a couple parts that we can scavenge. There's a mailbox over here that's got a magazine and what looks like a newspaper. Okay. How this helps us, I'm not sure. Old newspapers, I suppose people could read them for nostalgia. And be like, look children, this is what the world used to be like when it didn't suck and, you know, bite and claw and all those other things and shoot at you. Ooh. This guy was ready to go. He was like, I'm loading up my truck. It's time to get up out of here. I got a baseball bat. I got a big ass gun. I got some big ass bullets. Essentially everything inside this car is big acid right now, including yours truly. Let's grab this over here. I don't know. He might have been very, very physically fit. There is no way for me to know that, but his house is now becoming my house. All of his stuff is getting deep inside my pockets. Alright, more stuff. Did I loot this right here? The TV table? Okay. I always wanted a literal TV table. Like, there used to be these Pac-Man consoles at... So, for example, there was an Italian restaurant down the street from my house when I was a kid. And there was a console there where it looked like a table, but it had, like, a Pac-Man table built into it. So it wasn't like a normal Pac-Man table. It was kind of like this really luxurious-looking oak table that was custom-made with a Pac-Man console built into it. And it had been like that since probably the late 70s, I guess. And it's still over there. Actually, to this day, you can still go over there, and the Pac-Man table still works. It is still over there. Pac-Man table is older than I am, but, yeah, it's... It's a cool thing, but I always wanted like a TV table, like a table with a TV where when you push a button, it's like and then a TV like unfolds from inside of it, Transformer style. Oh shit. Bad doggy. Ow! You bit me for six plus zero, which is six. I feel like I should fall back into the living room where we can fight both of them. Who am I controlling right now? I'm controlling Paul. And it appears as though Paul is having trouble it thinks Paul is over here we have some seer we have some severe detachment issues right now when it comes to like where our characters are standing I guess I'll just hit the dog with a baseball bat <laughs> sons of bitches literally all right well I'm gonna have everybody fall back to this room so that technically at some point in the future maybe we'll be able to yeah Paul is still counting as being like back there somewhere I don't know once again, I may need to restart the game after this episode because we've been having a lot of, like, really odd issues. I had heard you could find dogs later on that'll actually stand guard at your house, and I was hoping that these would be them, but nope. Not friendly. Both these dogs are more interested in, like, chewing and, like, injuring me and doing horrible things to my groin region. This one's being dodgy. Let me see if I can get in here real fast. There we go. And then we'll see if we can kite the dog back into this room, maybe. Or if there's a side gate, I'd rather go around. It'll let us engage the dog at a much more... I don't want to fight the dog in a hallway. That gives the dog an advantage. And removes our advantage for having... Oh, wow, there's a lot more dogs out here than expected. Okay. This could become painful. These two dogs look different, though. I've never seen two dogs with that model before. Let me swap out with Tweedle time here. It looks like this guy got killed by his own dogs. That's unfortunate. For him, anyways. And we've missed the attack dog. Let's continue. I guess I'll just have him follow over to here, even though he still has... Yeah, that'll just block Tweedle... No, never mind, it won't. Well, it will. Okay, so Tweedle time's out here now. Whatever, we're not going to worry about it any further. We got this fixed right now. Got some very severe doggy problems, though. This one is apparently vicious. The other one is just an attack dog, so his designation has been changed. His attack is especially brutal and hits us for six points of damage. These dogs are really good at not letting me hit them in the face with objects. That one seems like he's just aiming for the crotch. That's not a bad plan. Not an ill-advised strategy. Would definitely work. If a dog bit me in the dong, I'd be done. I'm out. Game over. I quit. I don't want to play anymore. The apocalypse has gotten too real. Zombies getting shot at, I can deal with that. But when a, when a dog bites you in the John Thompson, I can't handle this anymore. Nope. Absolutely not. 
I feel like I should probably be fighting these from like on a different side or something if manageable no I don't want to fondle the dead man right now let's they gave us a couple more percentage chances to hit maybe we'll get him yeah take that doggy take that right there I'm channeling my inner feline right now come to me great spirit of the house cat oh. Great spirit of the house cat's feeling lazy right now, apparently. Oh, good, we got one. We didn't kill it, though. We just knocked it out. No oh, good, I'm bleeding profusely. I like bleeding. Do -dip 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 Ew, his leg twitches. I think I mentioned that before. Either way, they don't seem to be immune to batons. So he hit 3 out of 4 with a 60% chance. Right there, RNG was in our favor. I complain about bad RNG a lot, but good RNG does exist. He's just going to bark. What is he bark? Oh, don't make noise. You're going to make zombies come in here. Zombies going to be like, mmm, delicious doggies. Okay, so zero damage right there. I feel like this could be a hazardous situation. What the dogs in this game don't factor in to this whole equation is that dogs are not necessarily about the damage dealt. They're about the crowd control capability. When a dog bites onto you and holds on, your chances of getting away are pretty slim. I don't know if one of these dogs got back up after he barked, so I'm going to try and get rid of him permanently if we can. There we go. 15 more damage. Yeah, get him nice and bleeding. All right, so now we're done with the dogs. We're going to finish them off real fast so they don't come up behind us and cause any shenanigans while we're at this location. And now we should be able to finish our loot circle. I don't know if this guy tried to steal from the backyard or what, but he's dead now. Well, zombie cop heard the noise. He's decided to check, and he's like, Hey, I'm undead, but I'm still doing my job. Nobody can ever accuse me of not being a hard worker. That would suck, though. You finally die, and you still don't get a day off. That'd be the worst. I'm pretty sure I clicked on him first, but it's a little weird that he got to attack me, but I'm just going to accept it and just keep moving because eh, it's one zombie. You're going down. I like that you had the ability to actually use your apostrophe properly in your shout. I respect that. A careful cause and careful attention to detail when shouting. I always like to make sure my punctuation is in the proper spot when I shout at zombies and also dogs. What's in the shed over here? It's locked. Not for long. Tweedle time. I need to heal people. Hold on. These trees are all up in the way right now and it's bothering me. Tweedle time. Come over here. Let's get Elaine. She will heal Tweedle time. I think Victor is looking a little bit shabby as well there we go now we're in better shape better shape than we were before we had more of like an obtuse kind of oblong circle thing going on right now and now we're squared away so i'm feeling pretty good this is gonna make a lot of noise but the door came open with three wax so that's okay i don't think it'll spawn that many zombies i can't see because of all these trees whoever designed this should have thought about that the trees either need to go invisible or like fade out a little bit when you're in these locations because you can't see where the dam sometimes. Alright, so we got a toolbox. We'll take that stuff. Nothing too useful right now. Plastic trunk with a whole bunch of ridiculous weaponry inside of it, including but not limited to a kukri. I may actually put the kukri on somebody. It sounds pretty awesome. A combat machete. Can you not take any of these? Take them. Pick it up. There you go. It's the kukri, isn't it? The kukri is too manly. It outweighs your inventory. That's what happened right there. Alright, that's not a knife. That's a knife. Let's go ahead and grab the kukri. Wooden trunk. There's a noisemaker. A wooden trunk and a cigar. Alright. Anybody need a lamp? Huh? A bag full of blood? Anybody want a bag full of blood? That seems like one of those indie movies that somebody makes on like a $35 budget, like, bag full of blood. And then it's just like a movie about nothing. Did I get everything in here? I cannot recall. Yes, did we get everything up in the wardrobe? Yes, we did. Okay, all of the wardrobe has been looted. Let us walk on outside now. I dropped my accent real quick. That's actually how I talk in real life. This is a fake voice that I'm putting in front of you right now. That other voice is what I actually sound like in the real world. But I've been trained to hide it. I've been trained to be ashamed of my natural accent. Did we pick up the scattered packages? Ah. Scattered packages full of rats. Hooray. Best birthday present ever. Mommy, Daddy, you got me a rat. I'm so happy. 
All right. Well, do we have time to go to Buchanan? How long does this take? How long do you want to fish? Oh, I don't know. Like two hours, maybe? Is that going to be... Oh, we got two fishies. Ooh, four fishies. Fishy, 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 fishy. All right, so we caught fishes. I've never been a big fan of fishing. I've been a fan of drinking, which is basically what fishing turns into for me. I mean, one or the other. You know, you take whichever. If you don't like fishing, you get going drinking. If you don't like drinking, you get going fishing. And that's how a fishing trip works. Everybody is occupied in that manner. People that want to drink, drink. People want to fish, fish. Sometimes you do both simultaneously. How's our job board looking right now? Joel Oswalt is still not feeling so great. Everybody is off duty. Okay, well, hopefully nothing terrible happens tonight, but we're going to run around. I promised I would talk to more people, so let's talk to Mark tonight. Mark is going to be our Mark for the evening. How did you all end up at that diner? We were on a bus evacuating people out of a hotel in Dallas. I had just started a job at that place, and, well, anyhow, the bus got a flat tire, and we were all ordered off while the driver repaired it. I walked off for a cigarette and to try and get some bars on my phone. About five or so minutes later, I hear screaming and see people running in every direction from about three dozen of those corpses, and I haul ass towards the bus, which is already moving. The driver was bit, and he was losing it. I told him to stop to go back for the passengers, and he pulls a gun and makes me sit down with Ryan and Michiru. Ryan had been sleeping in the back, and Michiru hadn't understood the order to get off. They were the only ones left on the bus. After a few miles, the bus driver started to lose consciousness from his wound, and the bus went off the road. All I could do was grab the gun and get Ryan and Michiru to safety following signs to that truck stop. I don't know what happened to Ryan's family or if Michiru was traveling with anybody. So did you know them at all? That's pretty heroic of you to save them like that. I didn't think about it, I just did it. It wasn't easy. Ryan wanted to go back and search for his family. I couldn't communicate the situation to Michiru, so I just knew we had to get somewhere else safe. I keep thinking that I could have done something different for others, but I don't know. Mostly I just feel bad for the kid. You think his parents are still alive? It all happened so fast. I don't even know where they all came from, but I saw a lot of people taken down. Some of them were little, real little kids. Kids just being kids, loud, and I think that's how they found us. Ryan had a younger sister. Don't tell him about that, or, you know, about what I saw. Alright. Well, we found that picture. I'm starting to think that he's talking about that bus stop right there. I don't know if we should give him the picture or not. That basically confirms that his family is dead. Let's see here. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that picture is of the fam that we found back at that other place. I don't know where I put it, though. It might still be in somebody's inventory. Let's see if we can move it around a little bit, but I, get, I think we should give it to him at the bare minimum. I... I don't know. I'm not a fan of sugarcoating things for people. I don't know. I feel like you should be truthful. Even if you got bad news, people need to learn to deal with it. I find sometimes nowadays people shelter themselves too heavily from bad news to the point where they just don't know how to deal with it anymore when they eventually get it against their will. So, I don't know. I'd rather give bad news and be honest than give good news and lie, I think. Yeah, it looks like the picture went somewhere. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's them. I don't know if we can give it to the main character right now and try and hand it off to him. Oh, we found deodorant finally. It's a miracle. Okay. Well, we might be able to fix up what's-her-name's bad mood then if we give her deodorant and the sleeping pills. Might fix it up slightly well, but anyways. I don't know if we can give the picture to him, but we should try, I think. Okay, so Ryan, I found a picture on one of the corpses. This is, uh... My dad carried this around in his wallet. They're dead, aren't they? Yeah, I thought you should know. I kind of did. I'd uh, like to be alone now. All right, buddy. I got you. I figure I'd rather be honest about it. I mean, what's the worst case scenario here? We like hide the picture and then he finds it. And then, you know, he can't trust anybody here. We just destroyed that kid's entire trust of this shelter. So I figure we might as well just get it out there right now. Let's talk to Grant and see if we can kind of line in on who this guy is. Got time for some questions? What would you say your skills are? I'm a good judge of character? Guess that one doesn't count for much anymore, but I don't know. I guess you could say I adapt. I never had to defend myself from an attacker, and now I can. Didn't know how to identify edible plants from poisonous ones, and now I do. I want to survive, and I'll do whatever it takes. You've killed people to survive? When it was necessary for survival? Yeah. 
Used to be that competition meant screwing somebody else over a promotion. Maybe you ruined someone's livelihood, bled them dry financially, or made their life miserable. It's just more direct competition now. Maybe even less cruel. Heard anything about other areas? Just what I've seen. Been trying to avoid the riskiest areas. Cities, supermarkets, hospitals, and the highways. Nobody has power. Haven't heard many vehicles. I've been around enough to realize it's not going to end anytime soon. We'll make this place better. A gym would help us blow off some stress and keep fit, but mostly I want to know that everybody's doing their fair share. That we're building to something, not just putting people under a roof and calling it civilization. I don't know if that makes any sense. Can you elaborate? Hmm. You know how you need to... You can feed somebody a fish or teach them to fish so that they can feed themselves? Well, I want to make sure people here learn how to survive rather than just have to keep... Or just... Learn to survive rather than have to just keep them alive, I guess. I don't know. If any, if there's anything I can't stand, it's unchecked sympathy. Alright. Well, I'd like to hear more about how you survived before you got here. What's to tell? I stopped thinking about what life was like and what it's like now. Every time I see one of those walking corpses, I just think, There goes somebody that didn't try hard enough. <laughs> that's that's kind of brutal, but okay. Well, that's gonna... We'll do, we did a couple conversations here. We'll start... Let me hand- I'm gonna give the deodorant and the sleeping pills to what's-her-name, so that Elaine's, so that we can maybe make her a little bit happier. Let's see here, there's the deodorant, there's the sleeping pills. I'm gonna back-to-back -back with her, just because she's been disgruntled for a while, and I think she has remained that way. Let's see, everybody's happy or content? Elaine Martin's still unhappy. She's content and bit. Everybody else is looking pretty good. Jody Hopkins. I don't remember what Jody Hopkins wanted. I think Jody Hopkins said he wanted to see his brother, and that was all there was to it. I think Jody didn't really have anything else to say. Man, a few words anyways. Alright, so with Elaine, let's go ahead and give her deodorant. Let's go ahead and give her sleeping pills. And let's see if that helps. Did that buck her up a little bit? It looks like... where's she at? She's around here somewhere. Towards the top. She's okay now. Alright. So that'll be good. I think that'll hold together for a bit. I think I haven't looked at my skills in a while either. I should probably do that. And just kind of like see what we've got laying around. We've got enough to where we can make a solid push towards some of the other good things. It looks like the final one here is going to go 4, 5, 6 for us to finish so that we can max out melee. I don't know what the final trait's going to be, but I figure it'll probably be something useful. I'd like to get a little bit more strength on Tweedle Time as well since he's our melee guy. I don't usually play melee characters. I usually play like snipers, so this has been fun for me, making a character that's a little bit different than what I normally do. So I'm going to do the same thing over here, 4, 5s, and 6s. Yeah, so I can go 2 into negotiation, but that's about it. I guess I'll go one there and one there for now. We'll make melee a little bit better, and then we'll figure out survival in a bit. Alright, up we go. Let's go to bed and we'll do our dialogue for the morning, and then we'll break off this episode, because it seems like we're coming up towards the end of our 25 minutes together. Time to end a day. Looks like we got 62 more morale. We're going to be dealing with some other serious issues, though. Namely, wait, we still used fuel? That They said the generator system was down. Did we fix it? Huh, we must have fixed it. I guess. I don't know. We gained a lot of food. Like, wow, we got a lot of food today. We got almost like 260 food. And we're actually only... We got some spoilage though right there, which is unfortunate. So how much are we eating a day? We're eating... 66. So everybody eats three food a day. The cat has a half and the horses eat four. So we're eating 74 food a day. That gives us enough for about two weeks. We're still not... We're staying pretty constant at two weeks. We're picking up so many new survivors that it's being difficult to get ahead. This is going to sound silly, but I had a dream last night. Something happened to a mom in the dream. One of those things got her. Really got to me. It even made me cry a bit. Uh, do you think maybe you could give her the day off? I just had this horrible feeling something's going to happen to her, and it would really make me feel better if I knew she wasn't doing anything dangerous. <laughs> I don't know. I I guess she can take a day off. It seems kind of dumb. Thanks. I thought you might tell me I was being stupid. That really means a lot to me when you are being stupid, but I'm not going to say it to your face, I guess. i got to run this entire place, and part of being a leader is being able to hold that stuff in. Here, try this. Don't ask what's in it. Just eat it. Something I wanted to tell you. I really appreciate you taking us in. When this whole thing happened, I kind of lost my direction. If I had met those two, felt responsible for them, I probably would have drank myself to death. Honestly, I didn't know what I was going to do if we ran out of food at the diner. For their sake, thank you. 
Don't mention it. I was only doing what had to be done. Seems like I'm gonna be here for a while, so if there's something you'd like me to focus my efforts on, let me know and I'll get it done. Well, everybody likes your food. Focus on that. <laughs> yeah, I haven't been challenging myself enough lately. Time I really took this whole cooking from scratch thing seriously and get real creative. Give everybody something to look forward to at the end of the day. I can't wait. I'll see you at dinner. Hey, I've been thinking about how to tackle one of those locations I saw on the road. You got a couple minutes? Sure, what is it? The place is a tiny apartment complex over in the Coparus Cove. I heard about it from a friend of a friend. There were a few families that knew the worst was coming, so they decided to stock up and fortify the building together. I made my way over there a few weeks after the power went out for good, and it was worth a shot. I got as far in as one of the units in the back from the window. There was plenty there, because no one's eating it. They're dead? Apparently. The smell hit me first. I hadn't noticed the doors were wide open to the apartment. I barely got out of there. They're packed into the complex. It's like a mausoleum, except noisier. I thought about opening the front gate and trying to get them to leave, but they welded it shut. They locked themselves in, and then someone screwed up somehow. Their loss, our benefit. Good call. I'll form a team and head out there soon. I know the area, so if you need me along, I'm more than willing to come with you. Let me know when you're going. Alright. I think Grant might want to go out on that one. Let me go look at the memorial real fast, because we can use the morale whenever we can get it. There it is. Alright. And so now that we've got the memorial taken care of, we'll go back out. And let me make sure that everybody has cleared out their inventory because I keep coming back to new episodes. And unfortunately, I'm just like, like not things are not where they need to be. And I'm like, hey, who put this over here? And who put this over here? And who put this thing over here? And it upsets me. And I just keep going and going and going. And then finally, I run out of breath. And then I pass out. And I'm laying on the floor with a blue face and whatever, you know. I think this is where we're going to break off the episode. Actually, I'm going to organize things so that we can get going in the next episode lickety-splickety. So let me go over here. Let's get these jobs all lined up so nobody has a job. Grant, what are you good at? He's good with melee, actually. The guy's not bad. He has no range skill, but his negotiation and survival are alright, and his melee is probably... I think his melee is probably better than most of the people we have in here. I mean, a 6 in melee is no slouch. It's better than what Paul has. I mean, is it better than Vic? Where's Vic at? He's got a 9 in range, though. Vic's a sharpshooter. Vic knows how to put bullets down range. Alright, so the refrigerator repair is going to take a little while longer. So I need somebody on refrigerator repair. Anita Cass, oh no, she's got eight melee. Anita's a beast. Alright, well, I need her on the refrigerator repair because I need that to get done. Yeah, that's fine. Six, eh, maybe I could take somebody a little bit less valuable and do it. Help out with the garage. So we got Anita Cass. We got Joel. Joel can't help with the refrigerator repair because he lacks the mechanical skills, so we'll throw him on the garage. Davis Cray is doing maintenance for some reason. Why is he doing maintenance? Hmm. See, it's weird because I thought that maintenance kept, like, your refrigerator and stuff from breaking, but apparently it doth not. Have him help with the refrigerator repair. There we go. So that'll be done in just a second. With everybody else, what we'll do now... Ishiru, Yata, she's unavailable, so we've got jobs over here. Let's throw everybody else on the garage and see if we can get that finished, like, right this second. I'd prefer it. And barring anything else going seriously wrong, I think we should be alright. The fence is good, the generator is good, everything's working except for... Well, we need the garage to get the car going, but we'll start on that next. I think Jody's probably going to be really, really stoked about the fact that he gets the opportunity to fix a car. I might bring along, instead of Paul, I may put Paul... What's he looking like? He's got two science skill, three medical. I may put Paul on the garage as well. And then what we might do is bring Grant. Where's Grant at? He said that he wanted to go to this place, so he's welcome to come along if he's really that excited about it. He's got decent melee skills, so let me outfit him to fight. I don't know what his strength looks like, but we'll get him equipped, and then we'll come back for the next episode. My name is Splattercat. Thank you for joining me here at the Nerdcast for the next episode of Dead State. I look forward to seeing you all in the next episode. Take care out there, everybody, and as always, I do.